Um, one of the things you mentioned, Harsh, was that um, I always like to, when I look at investments, I always like to think about supply and demand, right? And one of the things that, that I think when most people think about investing or not even investing, but hotels um, is the, uh, you know, the demand piece, right? And people think of hotels and they think tourism and they think tourism and they think recession and they think you know, goes down, right? They think that there's a chance that that could happen. So you said something earlier, um, you said demand is mostly for, for from corporate travelers, right? Can you talk to us about that a little bit more? Like what's Ooh. driving that demand? How are they filling up the rooms? Why yeah, are people so coming? Mm -hmm. Each of the hotel, it's just like in any multifamily or any, uh, any of the investment that we make, there's a couple of things that are most important. Location is very important. The brand name is important. Uh, an operator is very important, and the demand drivers. What the demand drivers are: number of companies, a growing city, right, and number of businesses that are around. Is there a hospital next door? Is there a small business that are next door? If, is it like a big corporation next door? Like if you're buying a hotel or building a hotel next to Apple. Right. Then you know number of rooms that are going to be coming in from Apple, right? But if there are 15 other hotels that are next to Apple, doesn't mean you're gonna hotels your hotel will be filled up, right? Do you need a corporate rate with them? So all these things have to be all taken care of when you're building it. And generally the hotel Hilton and Marriott will help you do those assessments and they come up with uh, numbers that they expect this many rooms will be filled. The way in pandemic, corporate travel literally came down to single digit, right? So all these hotels, the big hotels kind of suffer. But the select service hotel, or what we call as a limited service, they're kind of interchangeable term, uh, they still stayed in 50, 60% occupancy, right? Why? Because corporate travel, maybe the large corporation, they generally don't tend to stay in some of these limited service, but mid-sized to small companies, they continue, some people, business travelers continue to travel, onesies and twosies, right? But the big hotels like Four Seasons, JW, big Hilton brand, they suffer, but the limited services hotel, because of the cost cutting, they continue to stay occupied 60, 70%. Now the demand has gone up. With everyone hitting the road, right? They still don't wanna pay for the full service because they never used to. Like average traveler, because the money is coming from their own pocket. It's not a corporate travel, right? When you travel on a company's dime, you tend to spend more and you're staying in a full service hotel. But you're spending your own dollar, you will stay in limited service and buy your own breakfast. I'm not gonna pay $19 for the breakfast and $25 for lunch. And if you're traveling with three kids, you don't wanna pay $100 for the breakfast, right? So <laughs> all you're gonna eat is a muffin and a coffee or some fruits. So that's why limited service star, all these hotels have started doing really well as compared to some of the big brand names and W's and JW's and O Seasons, they have been suffering. And they tend to stay occupied by big corporate guys who can pay $400 a night. So a lot of these uh, businesses, uh, like if your hotel is next to a factory outlet, if your hotel is next to a hospital, if your hotel is next to a business bar, those travelers are continuing to do business and the business are booming, right? And those are managed by five employees, 10 employees, and they are still doing face-to-face -face meeting. They still have to travel. That's why all these limited service hotel, especially again, going by the location, if it is in the suburbs, they have done really well. In fact, they've done so good they're doing better than what the pre-COVID level is. I hope that answers you know, it. Yeah, it, and correct me if I'm thinking about this um, in the wrong way, but okay, so it's almost like the full service, if I'm comparing to multifamily, right? The full service is almost like the, the luxury level tier A sort of class A multifamily, right? It's got all the bells and whistles and it's for the luxury traveler or the luxury um, tier uh, resident. 
Right. So then you've got the limited service, which is a tier down. It's almost like the class B or class C. It's like the workforce housing of the of the multifamily. Side. I wouldn't say that. that. No. no, I would say the luxury, maybe like uh, full service hotels are like, a, you can call it a San Francisco, New York, downtown the mm. condoms. Okay. It has nice views. It has got a it. service. It has a nice cafe at the bottom and those kind of things, right? Yeah. And you have the food brand, food brand like Hilton and Simple Marriott. That's full service. Those are kind of like a class A plus luxury condo and multifamily. Okay. Then you okay. come down to limited like Hilton and Marriott. And again, this is my thought process, right? They, they are more like A, A minus kind of a, you have what you need. You have bigger space. You have a working space. You can stay longer, kind of like a, you can work from there. It's kind of a home and you don't spend too much money. You don't need, you pay for what you need. You do not have all the bells and whistles. Yeah. Then you have class B and class C, what I would call is days in and best rest in, and all these will go down that path. And then you have one of those hotels where Julie stayed. Remember the class? <laughs> I was like, oh, that's where I stayed in the class C. Yeah. Now, now it so, makes sense. That's how I'm rolling you know, like, these days, Annie. Where you, how do you classify? That's my classification. Don't be wrong. But yeah. that's how I look at it. Like, yeah. Yeah, makes that sense. makes a lot of sense. Well, when it comes to the investor side of things, so now we've learned a little bit about how the business runs and the demand drivers and all of that. So when it comes to investors and thinking about investing in a hotel or a group of hotels, what why would somebody choose to invest in hotels over, say, multifamily? What are the differences that they should be looking for? What's the same? How should they be evaluating these opportunities? I think it's a more of a diversification, like uh, investing in a multifamily is always good, right? It has done well. Hotel, in reality, we have turned in better than 20%, 25% return year on year, and uh, better than multifamily. Uh, in the past, multifamily, see, multifamily has done good in last four or five years. And before that, it was giving you an average, like it will 3% rent raise, and now the cap rate has come down. So if you did an acquisition, say three years ago, then your returns are higher. Multi and as compared to hotels, the cash on cash on hotels are very good. Most of the time, like if you cash on cash is say 14, 15%, you're getting it in the hotel. In five to six years, you get all your principal back in a way, 15% cash on cash you're getting. At the same time, your principal is still there in the hotel, right? You, on an exit, you get a multiple of that. Or hotels are generally sold at seven and a half, eight percent cap, right? So the way it works in hotel, it's 60, 65% occupancy, you start turning in profit. Right now, most of the hotels are averaging well above 80, 85% occupancy. The other difference is in hotel is, is seasonal. There are always a season, it goes up and down. So there are season, there are certain shows, there's different convention. Hotels will do really well and it can recoup all the money that they may have may not have made in say winter months in one area. And that, that may not be the peak season for them. But multifamily in a way 12 months, it's kind of a stable, right? There's no peaks and valleys. Yes, summer months, multifamily tends to be a little bit few percentage high, but so that's the one big difference. The other big difference in the hotel is it's a single you know, unit, basically. It's a single operation. It's largely governed by, again, the brand. It's governed by how good the operation is and the repeat customer, repeat client. They keep coming. If your operator is good, the uh, people tend to follow. And the loyalty that we talked about, Hilton and Marriott, they have a, such a good brand name, they have a loyalty. So clients will keep coming back. So it's kind of a little bit for a safe bet from the investment. So I see, I think too much of one is always risky. That's why I like these uh, hospitality uh, class. I mean, it went through some tough time. So did multifamily, I would say, right? 
I'm equally invested in multifamily and hotel, but hotel have come back very strong and uh, it's not going anywhere. Obviously we know people are going to be traveling, they're gonna be staying. And as long as you have a good location and the brand, I think it will continue to do well. Why do you think hotels are a good uh, investment that 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 sh people should be looking at right now? Well, it went through some uh, valuation change uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, if we would have acquired some of the hotels that were going away or uh, being sold at a discount last year, and we tried our best, <laughs> but uh, we couldn't get... Uh, uh, we made quite a few bid, but there were bigger institution money out there. And they, were, they had a fund of over 500 million and they were acquiring uh, hotels in a very good location. So right now, I think valuation of hotels is still a little bit on the lower side. And uh, corporate travel is opening up slowly. And the, uh, what people think, oh, they will continue to work from home. I think that's, uh, I think more and more people are gonna be start uh, coming back to work and they will be still be traveling. Yes, there will be forever, there will be some changes. There will be hybrid model, but uh, I think the corporate travel is bound to start happening. It may not be as much as what pre-COVID level is, but uh, if that picks up the hotel rooms and what we call is the average daily rate and rev bar will continue to rise. Mm -hmm.